We're in the studio today with Dr. Michael Finkelstein and uh, we're preparing a salad for lunch. And uh, we're going to talk to Dr. Finkelstein about sort of how this fits into the bigger picture of our health. So, Dr. Finkelstein, if you can tell us a little bit about um, slow medicine and what that is. Well, you know, slow medicine is an approach to living that puts the physical body into the context of our greater lives and connects the dots between all the moving pieces, nutrition, relationships, life purpose, and so on. It recognizes that those things affect each other and so that when we want to think about health and we want to be healthier, we want to make sure that we're addressing all those parts, not just the physical. And so how does slow medicine play a role in the way we eat? Well, food is a great example of how we're doing because food is an opportunity every day to take the physical and embed it into something greater. And so food has properties. You know, these goji berries that come from far away have tanginess and sweetness and color. And, you know, the raisins are chewy and sweet. And so we add these to our food, not because of only the macronutrients or the micronutrients, but because of the interest that it produces. And so it elevates food from just sort of bland and, you know, sort of count measured to something that's sort of exciting. And how do you get people who are kind of resistant to eating vegetables, who don't eat a lot of healthy food, who do a lot of fast food, how do you get them to start eating more this way? By being creative, by putting something together that by itself is appealing just because you want to look at it, because you're touching it, you're smelling it. All these aspects of it elevate the food from maybe somebody would say a boring sort of, sort of spicy radish to something that creates now something that's much more interesting. You know, when I cut this lemon and squeeze it over the salad, you know, it sort of just adds a brightness to it. You know, I take 80 million year old salt and I grate it over the salad. It sort of adds an element of something that's so deep that, yeah, you can look at it and count how much sodium is in here or how much ascorbic acid, but it's not all that that's about. It's about the life of this salad and the life of the people that you're going to share. And is all this stuff available just in our local grocery store? Is that where we can get all this? Well, you know, people live in various, you know, areas with availability to be, you know, as part of the question and somewhat of the challenge. But on the other hand, all of us have options. We can take a salad, we can take basic greens, and then we can add five ingredients to it. Thinking about the color, the crunchiness, the sweetness, the tartness, the chewiness, all those different things that stimulate aspects on our palate, but also in our eyes. And then think about the people around us or even where some of these things came, come from. I like to suggest that people just take a little, you know, sort of sprout container and just do a couple of sprouts in their own windowsills and just add that as a finishing touch to the salad. And, feel personally involved in its creation. Well, um, so you don't have a recipe you recommend or, you know, how do people kind of create their own version of what you're doing? I think spontaneity is, is the key aspect of the recipe. It's, yeah, you may start off with some basic ingredients, things that are familiar and common, but add something that's unusual. Um, think of the color, try to get variety. Um, and then when you sit down to eat, Understand that our body assimilates and digests this nutrients better if you go into a calmer state. So flowers and candles on a table, turning off phones, these are all elements that can really make a big difference.